So here we go. Uh, I used this pizza box before for this little book, which I made for the mixed media morsel uh, once. And uh, what's left of the pizza box I'm using for this little book. And I'm trimming it down with my paper, paper cutter, kind of eyeballing uh, the size on my piece of fabric that I wanted to use. And once I have a piece cut, I uh, use uh, some smaller pieces to glue down on the spine to make it a bit stronger. Um, here I am deciding which part of the fabric I'd like to use. I really love the red bird, uh, the one on top is a bit too close to the edge, so I pick the one at the bottom and I am gluing that down with a fabric glue, uh, spreading it out with uh, my spatula and then glue down the piece of fabric, making sure I have a bit of uh, leftover hang over the edge of the cardboard so I can uh, fold that um, inside. Uh, this is a, yeah, I call it a zigzag scissor. I, I'm not sure how you call it. Uh, trimming down the uh, axis with that and the zigzag uh, will prevent it all that much from uh, fraying the fabric uh, so it won't fray as much. Um, cutting down the corners so it will fold easily to the inside and using the fabric glue again uh, to fold uh, the pieces of fabric uh, inside. So it's beginning to look like a book already. Uh, I'm making sure everything is stuck down really well and then I need to cover the inside uh, as well and I use a piece of scrapbook paper for that and I'm gluing that down into my cover with um, a glue stick. Which kind of failed on me really. And that went uh, okay. Uh, the piece of paper looked very nice inside. The only thing I regret is that it had a few folds in the uh, middle part, the part of the spine, but that's okay. Here I have already cut some uh, pieces of paper to the right size for my signatures and I made a kind of a template for that. So I have grabbed all kinds of paper and scraps and book text paper that I could find to make my signatures. I wanted to make five, uh, each having ten uh, pages. So this is a book from uh, Paulus de Boskabouter, uh, a children's book. And I use some atlas paper, I use some scrapbook paper, I use some normal copy paper and some colored paper uh, because I learned that is what a, a junk journal is. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm very new to this. Um, also, I'm not sure what, what is the difference between a junk journal and a smash book. I don't know what the difference is. So here I have uh, cut down all my pieces of paper. I have um, enough for five signatures, uh, each containing ten pages. And now I am uh, just jazz, jazz them up a bit. I have um, used leftover tissue paper, napkins, uh, scrap paper, uh, die cuts. Um, uh, this is a piece of tissue paper which I stamped on. 
uh, using a Mod Podge for some things and using my glue stick for some things. Uh, uh, every small part of scrap paper I am using to um, make the pages look nice. Uh, this is my favorite script stamp so far, um, which has no brand name on it, and I'm using a Stazan inking um, with the Stazan and then uh, stamping on all of the pages. Not all, but a lot. And to clean out my stamps, uh, I do that on those pages as well. This is some leftover doily I had, gluing that down with a Mod Podge. These are some pages uh, from an uh, encyclopedia, a gardening book. Um, that I had and just gluing down all kinds of things to make these pages look uh, pretty and indeed it is a great way to get rid of your junk and this is uh, such a signature with 10 pages that is ready to go I'm not even sure what you do with a junk journal because, well, mostly you see um, it's added with lots of stuff. So how would you journal on that? Well, you could go over it, of course. So tell me, what do you do with a junk journal? Do you make art journal pages in there or do you uh, use it for um, like uh, use it like a diary maybe or like a notebook maybe here I am making a little pocket out of a piece of scrapbook paper and using some double-sided tape to uh, stick it down on my page And what I did, uh, once I was ready to bind them into my book, because of the signatures, you have the top page, which is uh, the size of the template. The middle page is also the size of um, the template, but because they are all... Um, how do you say that? Because they are all in one pack, the middle piece of paper will stick out a bit. So what I did is I trimmed those uh, down a bit. Here you see my signatures ready to go. Uh, I believe I will show to you what I mean uh, in a second. I made this template for the holes and I did make a mistake with this. You will see in a minute because there are only three rows on there. So I made uh, those holes into my cover, but I have five signatures of course. So I had to add some more holes later on. And luckily for me, I had room on the spine to do so. But, well, this is the first junk journal I have ever made, so I guess it will be forgiven. And in the end, it all looked very good. And because it is a fabric cover, it was a bit hard to pinch in the holes there. So now I need to do the same with the signatures. I'm adding some uh, 
clips to hold down my pages uh, they, so that they don't move all that much and using my template again to pinch in the holes on the signatures. Um, I do measure that out so I know for sure they will all be uh, in the same place for the other signatures. So I sewed in already one signature and as you can see here I'm showing you. Here you see all the pages sticking out on the edge so I trimmed them a bit down and um, using this thread I take three times the, the size of the cover for my thread for each signature and it was very hard to get the thread through the needle uh, but I had this little tool um, that kind of worked, it still was hard to do and it uh, broke on me with uh, adding the last signature so need to be uh, thinking about what kind of thread I use for next time as well so here I'm going in the middle hole pushing it through then use a tool to take the needle uh, through all the paper and the cardboard and then I go back through the top hole It's hard to get it all in one, to get the needle through in one go. So when it's through, I will go back to um, the bottom hole. You see the bottom hole and pinch through all the pages again. and then go back to the inside through the middle hole but let me tell you there are lots of tutorials to find on YouTube about this kind of binding your uh, books uh, that's the way um, I have learned it so if this video uh, is a bit too fast or not all that uh, clear uh, I would suggest you find some other tutorials about binding your junk journals as well. And make a knot in the middle and, and then my signature is secured. And I do it the same way for all five of the signatures. Then I use this crocodile tool to make the uh, holes with the eyelets and add a ribbon through it to uh, have a sort of a way to close the book. And adding some embellishments uh, to the cover and I do that with my uh, hot glue gun to make sure it all is secured very well and won't come off when you actually using the book. So gluing down a little leaf which had some glitter on it. Also there was a, a gem which said make things happen. I thought that would look nice and adding some leaves and some roses to the cover of my book. And that's about it for this first junk journal I made. I really enjoyed uh, creating it. It is kind of a, 
a task because um, it takes a while. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's quite easy to uh, make your own junk journal. And as I have learned, there are several ways you could do for binding such a book. So you just have to search you, the YouTube uh, for that and you will find loads of videos on how to make a junk journal. Uh, I hope you like uh, uh, the process of this video and um, the way this journal turned out. Um, here are some photos uh, still for you to see. And, uh, well, see you again very soon. Bye-bye.